Israeli 1919A4 kit in, and I realized without the right side plate, thanks to the D-mill, it's actually a, a pretty interesting opportunity to be able to see how it operates. So uh, I thought I'd make this video. A number of minor differences from when they uh, converted them to 308 after they were bought from the U.S. So I'll just point those out as we go through it. And uh, I'll start by sort of putting it back together so I can explain what everything is. So I've got almost everything off this except for some of the major parts like the trunnion, top cover, and then I have the cam lock plate on. So I'll just start putting this back together and uh, pretty much explain what everything is and then we'll do a uh, sort of function test. This is the barrel and barrel extension. The 1919 is actually a short recoil gas assisted weapon. The barrel just screws into the extension here. It's threaded and it has a lock spring right here if I can get it to focus. You can see the notches on the actual shank of the barrel. Now the Israeli ones are sort of squared off as well as the spring. All the American ones are rounded. Um, that's just one little difference. You can see the track that the bolt rides in. You can also see the sort of lug for the accelerator to coil around. And more importantly, <coughs> You can see this piece, which is actual lock piece that locks the bolt. What happens is, as you go into battery, that rides over this, which then pushes the lock up into the underside of the bolt, and that is how it locks up. See on the underside here how this shelf is lower, so that way when it rides forward, this will engage and sort of hit that beveled edge and push it into that locking position. Barrel and barrel extension back in and you can see the lock plate here and the actual lock piece here so when we push this forward just slides up over it. Frame, it has the trigger the accelerator and two prongs at the front which ensure that the locking piece moves down when it recoils. You can see the accelerator right here as well as the sort of T-slot shape of the trigger if it'll stay in focus. Yeah. A change with the Israeli guns is that at the rear here instead of having a vertical plate which blocks trigger movement. They have a pin that has been welded in and has a hole that is threaded with a screw and a nut. That is for adjusting the timing instead of having to bend the trigger. During the cycling demo, just to make it easier, but normally you'd have this spring and plunger with the pin on this plunger going into this slot here and that sort of pushes on the accelerator and gives the extension a boost during the return stroke. So as an example, I'll try and get the uh, accelerator sort of wrapped around here. There you go. Into that slot. So you can see these are in place now. The breech lock is up. So when it recoils, that wedge just makes sure to push it down. So there's no chance of it sticking or anything. Alright, so here's the bolt, the bolt handle, and the extractor. The bolt is a huge chunk of steel. You can see 762 is marked on it because this is a 308 bolt by the Israelis. We've got the locking lever that both cocks and unlocks it for firing. We've got a channel here that interfaces with the nub on the underside of the lever on the top cover and that moves the slide and pawl for feeding. We've got a handle on the front and then we've got another hole for the extractor which goes in the other side. Here we've got a couple things. We've got a hole for the drive spring. 
We've got the actual sear piece, which interfaces with the trigger at the T-slot. And we've got a nice mark from it hitting the metal buffer pad on the back plate. Alright, so this is the left side of the bolt. You can see all kinds of channels milled out. You can also see the half circle milled out for the extractor. This is actually the extractor in detail. This both extracts rounds from the belt and guides them down into the T-slot during feeding. And to put that in, all you do is you put it up vertical and then rotate it down. The bolt, normally the extractor would be sitting over top of your round, which would be right here, ready to be pulled from the bolt. During recoil, it'll get moved down through into this T-slot, and then during recoil again after it fires, this is just going to fall right out of the bottom. The lever is actually cocked and moved around during cycling as there's a slot in the top plate here, and that just sort of, there we go, rides in that. Obviously this would be static and the bolt would actually be cycling. The actual top plate here does two things besides keeping control of the locking lever on the bolt. It both has the spring-loaded plunger here for keeping the back plate in because that just slides down. And the actual body of it is spring-loaded so that you can use this as a handle to pull back and that little ledge here will keep control of the top cover. The barrel extension back so it's unlocked. Got the bolt started so I can just push it all the way in. And you can see the extractor sort of move up into place above where the first round would be thanks to the slots and plates on the left side that I'll look at later. The buffer plate's really simple. I mean, it's the back plate. You got the buffer tube with the aluminum grip over it. You got the slot for the trigger. The hole for the back piece of the drive spring rod. Simple. So, now you can see the interface of the trigger to the sear. The trigger you are actually pulling upwards and it hinges the sear downwards like that. So normally you'd have to push this spring plunger out but since the top cover is open I can just slide this whole thing forward. And then the back plate just goes into that slot, slides down into position. We can just move this back over it. So you can see the nub on the underside of the lever for the top cover. And then I'll move the slide around along with this spring loaded pawl. So it'll just slide over a new round, pop back down, and then push it into place. And you got another spring loaded piece here. That is a 308 specific one, and while I'm at it, you can see this sort of piece that goes over here. That is a 308 cartridge stop. You can take that out and uh, just have it fire 30 out 6. We've also got a rear cartridge stop, which you can see fits in that slot on the same pin as this, and comes around. We've got our bolt and battery. Lift up the extractor, put our cloth belt with our 308 dummies in place. Let the extractor fall back down. Make sure the lever is in the right place on the top cover so it'll interface with the bolt. Looks like it isn't. There we go. So, as the barrel and barrel extension recoil with the bolt starts to pull the first round out of the belt. It also gets unlocked. The slide and feed pawl move to grab the next round. And the extractor starts to pull the current round lower until it starts to go into the T-slot. So on the return stroke, it will go right into the chamber. And the slide will start to move the next round in the belt back while the extractor moves up to grab it. Then, hopefully, on the next stroke back, 
The next round is pulled out of the belt. And the first round, which is still in the T-slot, simply gets dropped out of the bottom. And once again, the extractor just drops it down into the T-slot. And then it goes forward again. Now, the reason the extractor works how it does in its movements is it's got this nice channel and it's got a little spring-loaded piece on the end here I'll show you in a minute. That spring-loaded piece is what actually guides it on the wall side plate here. So as you go forward, goes up over the first round, pops over this ledge thanks to the spring, Starts pulling the first round back, starts going down, continues coming back, hits a little indentation here and one here. And after that, the spring loaded piece is flush with the rest, so the extractor simply drops down to the bottom level on the um, barrel extension here, goes forward. The round is already starting to be guided into the chamber now, so the extractor isn't needed. And then it comes back up to grip the first round. A uh, dummy round in here. We'll start to pull it back. You can see it's following that slope. Comes down, hits the next indentation. Comes down. The cartridge is being guided enough now that it doesn't need the extractor anymore. The extractor comes back up so we can go over the next round in the belt. And the process is continued. The next, the round in the chamber simply falls out because it's only being held in by the T-slot. So once the front of the case is out of the chamber mouth, it just slides right out. A little spring-loaded piece. 